Hey guys, welcome back to Movie Sim Podcast. I'm Summer. And I'm Lynn. And this is our seventh episode. Yay! Mm-hmm. Today we're going to be talking about religion. But before we do that, I just wanted to mention one recommendation that was sent to me from one of my friends. It's called Ms. Curls, and we'll link the Instagram and their website below and the specific product that my friend recommended. And this is like a small Black-owned business, so we really wanted to support that because it seems like from our last episode, a lot of people really liked it, and they were talking about how we spoke about a lot of these brand names, and then they also wanted to mention some small-owned businesses as well, so... I just wanted to mention that one that my friend recommended, and I guess we can just start off on our episode now. (laughs) So, Lynn, what is your background in religion? I am not a fan of organized religion in general, (laughs) but nothing against people who are religious. But my dad's family is Catholic, and my mom's side is like Vietnamese Buddhist, and we're pretty active at our local temple. But some of them, Mm -hmm. like some of her siblings, have converted to Catholicism as adults. I think it had to do Mm -hmm. with the in-laws needed them to convert to be married and stuff like that. And their kids are Catholic and stuff. So it's kind of a mixed bag there for my family. Mm -hmm. I've gone through all the sacraments of Catholicism, which is like stuff that you hear about that's like getting your first communion, which is like the little Jesus wafer. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) and uh, confirmation and stuff like that. So I've gone through all Mm -hmm. of those, which uh, my experience with that was pretty interesting. And I'll probably talk about it in a little bit. But what about you, Summer? I also come from like a mixed bag of uh, mixed bag of (laughs) religious backgrounds. So on my dad's side, we're Lutheran. I was baptized as Lutheran and I will go into my baptism briefly as well because I actually chose to be baptized. I wasn't baptized as a baby. I actually got the choice to when I was 10 but I'll go into that later but on my mom's side there's this thing and I think I've spoken about it before but in Japan there's this thing called the Koseki Tohon which is like a government record of families I guess or like everyone in that's a Japanese citizen. Mm -hmm. So I'm in there too but our like official religion that's in that document for our family is Shinto Mm -hmm. which is a Japanese religion but we've also gone to like Buddhist temples too so it feels like a mixture of the two and also one thing that's a bit odd that I'm not sure I'll go into it later as well but I said that we were registered as Shinto right Mm -hmm. but (laughs) my grandfather when he passed away a few years ago he chose to have a Buddhist funeral So we were like, not sure why that switch happened. I'm sure he had his reasons, but we're just not entirely sure. But yeah, it's just to me, from my experience, it felt like a very, like you said, mixed bag (laughs) of religion, especially on my mom's side. And we'll get into that, how some things feel very cultural rather than religious, Mm -hmm. you know, although it may have been different in the past. But anyway, was there like a particular thing you wanted to get into first? just think it's interesting what you said about the baptism like you chose to be baptized because I was baptized as Mm -hmm. a baby in the catholic church that was normal yeah (laughs) my experience is not normal (laughs) so yeah I was baptized as a baby and I actually went to religious schools all the way up until my freshman year of high school and then my sophomore year I started in public school but Mm -hmm. the first school I went to for the first four years wasn't catholic It was like a non-denominational Christian private school. Mm. So I didn't actually know anything about Catholicism. I just knew that I was baptized as Catholic. So when I was that young, so like from the age of five to 10-ish, I like didn't know anything about Catholicism because the way they did it was just like non-denominational prayer, I guess, to be inclusive or whatever. And then I moved to another school for fifth grade. And (laughs) this school... I don't think we knew this until like after we were already there, but it was like one of those crazy fundamentalist Christian schools, which okay. which is like the people who are like crazy evangelical and stuff. Like all our textbooks, including like math and science were like about God. Mm-hmm. Our science textbook was like the earth is only thousands of years old and we didn't evolve and stuff like that. And that's like fifth grade where you start actually retaining information about stuff. So that was really weird for me. (laughs) And then that school kind of closed down for obvious reasons. (laughs) 
<laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Um, the school was really tiny. Our grade was the biggest and we had 10 people total. Oh my yeah. God. The seventh and eighth grade had three people put together. Like there was one eighth grader and they just like put them all together. It was really weird. Wow. That's a very tiny yeah, school. Yeah. There were like less than a hundred people in the whole school. It was like, I'm not surprised that it shut down. It was whack, honestly. <laughs> And then after that, I went to an actual Catholic school from sixth grade to freshman year of high school, sixth or eighth grade in one school. And then the freshman year at like a Catholic high school. And then that was like a really big twist for me because I'd never been exposed to like Catholicism formally because we didn't Mm -hmm. like grow up really going to church. We went, I think, on like Christmas and Easter sometimes. And even then, it was Mm -hmm. kind of, we didn't do it that often. It was, like, a couple of times I remember going. We didn't go every year on those days and stuff like that. So that was a really big flip. And I had a lot of trouble because religion was one of our subjects. And, like, we got graded for the class, right? So, like, I didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. And all these people already knew it because they had done it for years. So I really struggled with that for a while. Because I didn't even know, like, they had all memorized the virtues and vices and things like that that are like really important to Catholics Mm -hmm. and I like didn't know anything and then what ended up happening was I'd only been baptized and people usually get their first confession and first communion and stuff like that done in like first and second and third grade because they go to like CCD or they do it through the Catholic school as a group so by the time I was in seventh grade my mom talked to the school or whatever and they basically like did a speed run of the sacraments for me but I hated mm-hmm. it because I had to do it during recess at school so I oh, didn't get no. to go outside and just with the only time to hang out with my friends I had to like sit down with one of the nuns at school and like learn about this stuff <laughs> Oh no, that's Yeah, sucked. it sucked. It was also I could get confirmed with everybody else in eighth grade because everyone was already, you know, lined up to do it. But I hadn't done any mm-hmm. of the previous stuff. And it was pretty annoying to do that. And then now I don't even practice. And I'm not a big fan of religion overall. So I had a lot of problems thinking back on how schools like this work. I'm not really a fan of religious schooling because especially like what got me was the whole grading thing, right? And not everyone that goes to those schools are Christian or Catholic. What? You know, yeah, and they charge you more if you're really? not Catholic. Why do they go then? I think some people have this idea that private school education is better than public school education, but honestly it's yeah, not. But... <laughs> it's honestly not. Maybe mm-hmm. it depends on where you are, but for where we are, it's not better. Honestly, I think it was worse. <laughs> yeah, so your tuition's higher in those like religious settings if you're not of that religion. Right. And I personally don't think it's fair to grade that as a subject and teach that in a school. But I get it because it's a private school and they're founded that way and they can do what they want. I just don't agree with mm-hmm. it and how it's handled, especially if you don't know stuff like from my personal experience but that's out of my hands you know but did you go to so the catholic church has ccd (laughs) i don't know that is. it's like what people that don't go to catholic schools they go to public school they'll like go to ccd Mm -hmm. on sundays or whatever or after school oh so it's like sunday school but sometimes it's held during the week and it's specifically for the catholic church so those kids can also do the sacraments and stuff Mm, okay no I did not go to (laughs) school so just a brief overview I grew up in Japan right so when I was two I moved to Mm -hmm. Japan and then I stayed there until I was about 11 Mm -hmm. or 12 but obviously there aren't a lot of (laughs) Christian or Lutheran churches in Mm -hmm. Japan so I never went to church when I was over there I mean the only time I mean, we would go to a chapel on the military base. They have chapels. But I, the only time I can recall that I went to a chapel was for my baptism. Mm -hmm. So I never went to Sunday school. But let me get into my baptism. And then I'll go on to my confirmation once I moved to America. So my baptism, my parents let me choose if I wanted to be baptized or not. Of course, my dad really wanted me to be baptized because... Although he's not a very religious man, I wouldn't call him really Mm -hmm. religious, but I think he just wanted me to be because he was, and he was like, it can't hurt. I kind of got to chose, but it was, you probably should do this, Mm -hmm. you know, but I was happy that they let me wait 
and also that I got to experience it and remember Mm -hmm. it. So I really actually enjoyed that and I'll never forget that experience. But let's see. I, I yeah, I really have like nothing to complain about for my baptism really. It was very simple. It was fine. So fast forward to me living in America. <laughs> so my dad wanted me to get confirmed as well. I absolutely hated confirmation class. <laughs> so <laughs> Oh yeah, and we also Lynn and I want to express that we respect all religions and we respect people who are more religious than we are. We are not hating on anyone who is religious by any means. Definitely not. We are just sharing our experiences and that's it really. Yeah, don't take it as (laughs) Um, like a statement against anyone who's religious. We just had different experiences with religion than people that are religious. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's just you know it's another experience that's shaped us as to like who we are today Mm -hmm. you know but anyway back to my confirmation class so we started going to church like every Sunday because after church I would have to go to my confirmation class but one I hated church I did not like it at all I (laughs) I was very bored with it I could understand why people like it I just never really got into it perhaps it was my priest or whatever pastor I don't know what his official title is you can see how disinterested I was because I don't even know what he was called but (laughs) I just found him to be very boring and I could not really get into it and I almost hated it and then after that I would have to go to confirmation class and oh my gosh let me tell you I did not fit in at all I, like I said, I'm not very religious. I've never been religious. My family's not super religious, you know? So it was just, I was a very different person from everyone else in my confirmation class, which is fine. But I just did not really want to talk to them because I think they were judging me too because I wasn't very Mm -hmm. religious. Because I remember one time they were like, Summer, the new Jesus song came out. And I was like... (laughs) I just didn't say anything back because I, I really could care less. And they just stopped talking to me after that. <laughs> they literally were like, a new Jesus song came out? They literally said that to me. This one girl came up to me. I remember her. She came up to me and she was like, the new Jesus song came out. And I was, I just didn't say anything because I was like, I don't care. I'm pretty sure I've shown with my actions that I could care less. <laughs> And there was one other girl in my class who also did not care. And she and I were like on a mutual, we had like a mutual agreement to never talk to each other because we hated the class, but we understood Mm -hmm. each other. (laughs) So um, at least I had somebody else who was in the same boat as me. But nevertheless, I got confirmed. (laughs) And that was an interesting experience. I hated it. And then after that, we just like didn't really go to church. Like I said, we're not very religious. I don't know. I'm glad we don't go to church anymore. I hated going. Yeah, like you, I also have a lot of reasons why I don't like organized religion. And I feel that although I'm not very religious, I do believe in God or a higher power at least. But I can understand why people feel the need to go to church and like if they really like church because I wish my church was like actually fun. (laughs) Maybe I would actually like going to church then. But I don't know. I I just haven't really had the best experience with going Mm -hmm. to church. Yeah, I never liked going to church. And there was a time when we started going to the Catholic school where we'd start trying to go to church on Sundays. And I hated it because the church we Mm -hmm. went to was kind of conservative. Because there are like slightly more liberal Catholic churches. Like it depends on the one you go to and stuff. I didn't like the one we Mm -hmm. went to. And it was so stuffy in there. I hated it. I kind of bounced to the complete opposite side once I started going to public school. Where I was like looking into occult stuff <laughs> after because I hated it uh-huh. so much. So I was like really into witchcraft and occult stuff for a while. And I had a lot of research mm-hmm. on it and I would like practice and stuff like that. And it was like that was a good time for me in the sense that I was open to a lot of new experiences and things because going to public school for the first time, that was like such a learning curve because that was the first time. 
I'd seen someone who was Muslim in my life. Like I'd mm-hmm. never met anyone or seen anyone wear a hijab before that. Wow, it was crazy because I would just go to school and then we would just go home because we lived kind of far from school. So by that time we would have to like go home eat dinner and stuff. So I would never, I didn't have friends like outside of that school and stuff. So I'd literally mm-hmm. never seen anyone in a hijab before I went to public school. Yeah, it wow. was like a really big culture shock at that time. But yeah, I bounced like to the opposite side and did stuff like that. And I used to do a lot of research into just like world religions in general because I thought they were interesting. And then nowadays I kind of participate in temple in the sense of like the big holidays like we talked about in our holiday episode. Mm -hmm. And I just go to church then. Not church, to the temple. Oh my God. See, they brainwashed me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But I'm a proud apostafarian, someone who's a part of the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I love it. If you guys don't know what (laughs) apostafarianism is, just Google the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. His noodliness has (laughs) enlightened me. I'm embraced by his noodly appendages, ramen brother. I love it. (laughs) I actually did a lot of research on that for a project in undergrad. So I'm an expert on pastafarianism, and I was very close to paying the 25 bucks to become an ordained minister. Oh my gosh, that would have been worth it. I might do it now, because I I just remembered it. Oh my god, do it. You have to tell me (laughs) when you do that. (laughs) But so you don't like go to church or practice anything now, right? Even though you like believe in no. higher power and stuff. Yeah, I don't go to church. Like I said, mm-hmm. I hate it. At least I hated my church. But yeah, I don't really practice. I don't even say like grace at dinner. I, I we've never done that. Like it's I'm very not religious, but I still do believe in a higher power mm-hmm. because I, I feel like there are certain things that cannot be explained. But of course, I believe in like evolution and things like that. But I don't know. It's I I, I don't ever see myself going to church again. Maybe if, if it's like for a special occasion like Christmas or uh, maybe Easter. Mm. I don't know. But I, I don't practice anything. I mean, maybe I pray occasionally if somebody close to me like really needs it. Mm-hmm. But other than that, no. Yeah, I was just curious if since you said that you guys are registered as Shinto, right? So Mm -hmm. from what I understand, a lot of Japan isn't religious in the same sense that a lot of people talk about religion, but a lot of it is kind of like cultural instead, right? Like, so people do it, but it's there's not like a religious intent behind it. Is that true? Yeah, from what I've experienced, it has been anyway. Um, I can't speak for what others have experienced. But for me, from what I've seen, it seems like there's a lot of things that are just, you do it because it's just the Japanese cultural. It's just what you mm-hmm. do. Like on our holiday episode, I mentioned that there's this thing where you go to, like you go visit the buddhist temple or shinto shrine on the first day of the Mm -hmm. year on new year's day it's your first visit right right? i mean it's like important i did that all the time growing up and i never viewed it as religious i've never felt anyone push like the shinto or buddhist religion upon me in japan Mm -hmm. like anyone in my family or any really any stranger Mm -hmm. it just all felt so cultural to me Mm -hmm. there there's just so many things I've never really felt anything religious. I'm sure there are, but like, it's just never felt that way to me. Like there's another example is like, uh, there's this thing, I think it's called Omamori. Mm -hmm. It's a Japanese amulet. It's commonly sold at Shinto shrines and Buddhist temples, Mm -hmm. but it's just like a good luck protection amulet piece of paper that's held inside of like this thing that's really pretty. And you just like put it on your phone or like you put it on your wallet Mm -hmm. or you attach it to your backpack. It's a lot of people doing it. They put it in their cars even like it. I don't view it as a religious thing. I view it as a cultural Mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't know. I'll go into my grandfather's funeral. So for that, I didn't actually get to go because it was just like bad timing. Mm -hmm. It was about to start my next semester of college. So I didn't end up getting to go and my mom didn't either. But he, like I said, we registered as Shinto, but he requested for his funeral to be a Buddhist funeral. So it's a bit confusing. <laughs> but one really interesting experience I had was for his one year mm-hmm. death anniversary. 
we had a Buddhist monk come to mm-hmm. our family home in Japan and he like I don't know what the hell he was saying but my mom couldn't mm-hmm. tell either but he was like mumbling some stuff and we had to like read from this this Buddhist book as like part of some kind of mm-hmm. religious ceremony for the one year anniversary thing so that's probably like the only thing that I can think of that was like probably the most religious thing I've done in relation mm-hmm. to my mom's side of the family but it wasn't it didn't even right. feel that religious either you know like we I mean maybe it's it's probably the like I said it's probably the most religious thing I've done but it did still feel mm-hmm. like cultural kind of you know so it was really cool to experience that <laughs> that's the only thing I can think of that I did that's super yeah. religious. but I guess that is kind of goes back to what side. we were saying that a lot of those things are more cultural like you were saying instead of religious so but I think that's kind of cool that it's like Mm -hmm. been around for so long that it just kind of integrates into the culture yeah I agree yeah what about you has it been mostly cultural for you on like your Vietnamese side Um, with Buddhism I think yes and no there's definitely aspects of it where we get together and pray to our great-grandparents that passed away and stuff on the, Mm -hmm. the it's either their birthday or the day they passed away I don't actually know I just go and do it because like that's just what we do like you know like you Mm -hmm. said it's not a religious thing for us it's just kind of something we do as a family and it's kind of hard to say I feel like because some of the things that we were talking about before like Buddha's birthday that we go to the temple for and stuff Mm -hmm. and we like do technically Mm -hmm. chant and pray at the temple and do stuff for the monks and stuff Mm -hmm. but it feels because our family's usually volunteering at those things too. So it feels just more like a community mm-hmm. service kind of thing more than religious for me, except for those parts where we're actually in the temple doing the prayer part. So it's a yes and no for me in that yeah. sense. The Catholic mm-hmm. stuff, I don't really touch or do anything with. <laughs> so that's all very like religious yeah. that I don't interact with really. I don't know. I yeah. I don't know if I believe in a higher power or not. That's kind of like up in the air. Oh, sorry. No, I believe in his uh, his noodliness. <laughs> but I like understand why people believe like in God or whoever they believe in, like in a higher power. And I understand mm-hmm. like the idea behind organized religion and having helping mm-hmm. people have like morals and stuff like that. For me, yeah. I like you can have morals and just like be a good person without religion too. And that's what I feel like people that are extremely religious and like try to say like you can't not have a religion. They don't understand that you can be a good person yeah. without religion. Like it's you can have morals without that. So yeah. I think it's like fine either way if you believe in something or don't believe in something. It's just like, you know, what everybody says, just don't like don't be a dick and like force <laughs> Enforce your beliefs on other people or like tell them that they're going to hell or whatever because they don't believe what you believe. Have you ever had that happen to you? Has anyone told you you're going to hell? Nobody's ever said that to me, but I've like felt that they thought that about me. Like Mm -hmm. I said in my confirmation class, no hate, but it's just I was just so different from them and I just felt like they could tell Mm -hmm. I wasn't really into it. And I had this feeling that they. I I don't know if they necessarily thought I was gonna like go to hell or anything you know like I don't know what they were thinking exactly but I just had like this weird feeling that they thought less of me because I wasn't really all that interested in what they were interested in which is fine in my opinion you don't have to be like at the same degree Mm -hmm. as everyone else you know of believing in something but I've never had anyone. Oh, yeah. You've never had anyone like tell you're going to hell. Mm, not to my face. <laughs> I think I vaguely remember someone saying I was sinning because, like, when my parents were separating, I like the reli- like because I went to like a religious uh-huh. school, right? So these these people were like weird sometimes. Like I remember people <laughs> being like telling me I was sinning for. Like, my parents splitting up and I was like I don't really know what you want me to do about that wait that's not that's uh, anyway yeah I mean it's obviously not right to say that to somebody especially like a kid but that's so messed up that's like saying like they're blaming but there's also people that think mine and your existence is a sin miscegenation so 
Oh, oh, absolutely. We're an yeah. abomination. So I mean, <laughs> that also reflects in that same thing where like, oh, for people that don't know, miscegenation is like the term for being an interracial couple. So since we're mixed race, we are abominations of Satan, apparently, some people. <laughs> I mean, I've never, like I said, I've never seen somebody no. say that to my face, but I've definitely gotten vibes and looks from people who, who think have like got interracial that. couples shouldn't exist. <laughs> you know, like you can just tell. Yeah, exactly. Like one time, I, I mean, I, it just, I could, you can feel it. You oh, yeah. felt it before, I'm sure. You can just tell when somebody's like, oh, they're just the staring by your existence. <laughs> or like, yeah, what you're, yes, literally the staring. We'll get into that in our, in a later episode because that is like very I don't know wrong in my opinion but yeah there was one time I'll just give an example I was in um, my college town with my boyfriend on a date at this one pizza place that <laughs> I love <laughs> but uh, we uh, as we were like walking to our booth I noticed this woman staring at us and then I noticed her husband was also staring at us and I was like oh maybe it's just like we look like somebody mm-hmm. that we that they know but it was like as they were leaving as well they kept looking at us and the way they were looking at us I could just tell they seemed disgusted that either I was interracial or that we were yeah. an interracial couple you know so oh it, yeah it, you know. can just tell you know what's kind of crazy any relationship that we're in is an interracial relationship by default <laughs> <laughs> Like, it doesn't matter what, what, I know. The, what your significant other is in our case. Like, no matter what, it's technically an interracial yeah. relationship. Well, I guess I'm just going to discuss with people <laughs> no matter what. No, I've definitely I really could care less. had people stare at me from afar. And, you know, like that look where they're either, what are you, like, out of curiosity or what are you just because it's like, they're mixed race. Yeah, there's a big difference between the curiosity stare and then like the disgusted yeah. by your existence stare. And I just really hate that. But yeah, I think perhaps that does stem from religious beliefs or just they <laughs> suck as a person. <laughs> I'm not yeah. sure. <laughs> but yeah, you're you're probably right though. It probably does stem from some religious like aspect. Yeah, probably at some point, like way down the line it did and then it just kind of Mm -hmm. like we said it becomes part of like their belief but it might not necessarily be religious for them but it like stemmed from religion or something again not everyone Mm -hmm. that's religious is like like thinks this way oh absolutely not yeah I mean yeah that's not what we're saying at all um there are a lot of good people that are really religious that I respect I, yeah, but I do really hate when people, like, press their religion upon you. I ha- I had that happen to me so often oh, in college. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of different religions, like, religious people coming up to me, asking me to be a part of their, like, group or whatever. And I was like, please. <laughs> really? No, they were not all Christian. I've only ever had that experience yeah, with, like, Christian we... groups. No one's ever asked me to, like, convert to something else. Well... There, we had some Mormons in our school. But Mormons are Christian. Uh, well, uh, I don't know. If, I see your point. Yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, they believe in Christian beliefs, but they're they're different. They're a different group. <laughs> but I, I, I don't know. I, I've seen a lot of Mormons because I was born in Utah. And my, oh, I have some. I totally forgot about that. That too. you were born in Mormon country. <laughs> yes so i've seen more than maybe other non-mormons but do you have anything to say about I your know, interaction with the church of latter-day saints i won't I, well i i mean <laughs> they just from my experience at my university you would just be rocking walking around and they would try to like come up to you and talk to you and i I would never let them talk to me because I just don't even want to be detained by them to, for them to try and push their religion on me. I just, I I don't believe that it's right to push religion upon people. And just across the board, I don't mm-hmm. think that's right. And so I did, I, I don't know. I have a very negative view of that. I also have a very negative view of the state of Utah. Although it is beautiful, like nature wise, I feel so uncomfortable when I go there because it's 
very heavily that's how I feel in West Virginia and (laughs) yeah it like literally the first person of color that I saw was on the military base I was like great (laughs) awesome (laughs) like it's just very uncomfortable I do not like going there I could not Mm -hmm. see myself living there at all perhaps just to visit it's a beautiful state but it's just it's not a visit, me. not live place. Right? Um, I don't think I would. Yeah, yeah <laughs> visit sparsely too. I, <laughs> I, I don't know. I just, it's very. If you ever go in, you, you, which you should, because there's a lot of there's a lot of beautiful sites like the the arches, and the Rocky Mountains are very beautiful. It's a beautiful state. I want to go for, for the nature views. I never want to go for. Perhaps I will have to go in the future for relatives, but I do not really want to (laughs) to be honest I if you ever go you're gonna feel the immediate uncomfortableness when you're just around the town because people will look at you as well you know it's the staring it's oh she's not I mean from when my parents were living there and they're of course Mm -hmm. like I said we're not Mormon and when they were living there of course my Mm -hmm. mom did not fit in and they had so many people like just go up to them and say what I forget what the official term is like, but like what section of the Uh, church uh are you part of? Something like that. Like there, I don't know what the official term is. I forget what my my father said, but it's just like you're constantly surrounded by it. Um, So may not be for the place for you if you're not. I'll just go to Colorado instead. Um, Yeah, I mean there are things I want to see in Utah. Yeah, definitely. The nature. Like, there's a bunch of national parks, but, like, I don't want to go to Salt Lake City (laughs) for a while. (laughs) That's kind of interesting, because I definitely went to, we didn't go to the same school. We went, but we're in the same state. The school I went to is definitely Mm -hmm. more in a rural setting, but yours was, like, more of a city setting, right? And then mine Mm -hmm. was definitely a rural setting outside of campus. So... (laughs) Um, um, yeah, a lot of yeah. people that went to my school were from rural areas as well, kind of surrounding. So there's a really? big uh, city population. It's literally like people from the suburbs of the city that we live closest to, and then the rest of the state mm-hmm. that's rural, basically, and like a couple of like the coastal cities. But right, there's quite a few people from rural areas. And I don't know, I kind of expected there to be more religious people. Oh, I totally forgot to mention for the first two years of university, I went to a Jesuit school, which is like a Catholic college. <laughs> oh my gosh, I yeah, totally I tried forgot to that you did that. I always just assumed. Yeah. <laughs> but it's interesting that you... I chose to go there because I got a scholarship to go there and I used to be like a nursing student Mm. and their program was good so that's why I went there I was very not annoyed but I was like this is very ironic that I'm going to a catholic college but they don't like make you go to church or anything obviously because you're in college the only thing religious about it honestly was that there were priests that worked there because it's a like the Jesuits, like the organization, and that they required you to take a religion course, like one or two religion courses as part of the curriculum. But they didn't have to be about Catholicism. Mm -hmm. It was just like, you have to take a theology class. So it wasn't... Oh, okay. It wasn't that big of a deal. But it was... I just thought it was ironic that I ended up going to a Catholic college for two years. (laughs) That is ironic. That's there, really the ironic. People there weren't, a lot of them weren't super religious, I feel like. A lot of people that went there was local because it, it was a pretty, actually a pretty good commuter school. So I was definitely the outsider there in both race and mm-hmm. just being an out-of-state student. <laughs> and that mm-hmm. was like kind of a big factor in why I transferred back to uh, somewhere that was in-state for us. But yeah, mm-hmm. so I just thought that was ironic that I ended up. And I actually worked for one of the priests as like, an on-campus job too so I have like really weird experience with Catholicism <laughs> that is weird but I, it makes sense yeah. why you went because of the scholarship because mm-hmm. school is expensive but I, 
I'm glad you transferred back to like a school within our state because I feel like we wouldn't have oh, met yeah, if same. you had it. Um, <laughs> so I'm glad. Yeah, because I would have like stayed up there for <laughs> nursing and then uh, we wouldn't have worked together. Yeah, okay. and we wouldn't be doing well, this look podcast. At that. I yeah. guess since we're just on the topic, <laughs> have we talked about like what our majors were and stuff? Our majors? Yeah. Oh, do you want to talk about it? Since we're on it, maybe we should just like mention it briefly, you know. Give the audience a little taste about our personal life. Yeah. Yeah, so after I transferred from that school, because I was there for nursing, I ended up at the bigger university that in the in-state university, I have a degree in psychology with minors in Chinese studies and linguistics and this may I'll be done with my master's in linguistics at a different school um still in state but just a different school closer to where we live and then I my first major was Japanese and then I also majored in econ as well so that was a lot of econ (laughs) well it's falling right now so you might want to consider buying it no I I like you've been watching it I don't know how money works. I just know it shows up in my bank account and then I have to like <laughs> use it so the economy moves. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> well, one thing I, I'll just like suggest to people, I mean, not necessarily buy Bitcoin, but invest your money into something so that your money can grow, not just sitting in your bank account because um, of course, if you have money, you know, that you can do that with. Don't go into debt just to do this. But uh, it just like invest in something whether it's like a house or like stock or something <laughs> or bitcoin <laughs> it, that's just like one way that you can make your money instead of it just like sitting around in your bank account because you don't get a lot of interest mm-hmm. just doing that anymore it used to be like a lot where you could see a significant difference um but unfortunately financial institutions have lowered that interest and it's not the same yeah, as it was such before. good life advice um, so <laughs> but bitcoin's dropping out um the only reason i know that i'm not really interested in bitcoin and i don't really plan on investing in it but my boyfriend is super into bitcoin he, and he really is into that every day he's like have you checked the bitcoin how much it's how much bitcoin is and i'm like no i don't really see it's know. just another person <laughs> impressing their beliefs on you about bitcoin <laughs> i'll tell him to stop doing that because it's <laughs> offensive <laughs> no no we kid it's all jokes he couldn't hurt a fly <laughs> oh my gosh Let's Do see. you I'm have any other interesting like, stories or encounters stories. with religion? Oh, one time. <laughs> I couldn't believe this happened. Um, one time I I was in middle school. I was, this was when I was in America. And this girl, I hated her. She was such, I mean, she was dumb. I don't know why she was in our advanced math class, but like, she just clearly got put in there because her mom, like, mm-hmm. bitched to the school that, why isn't my kid in this class? Like, you you know, because that's how public schools work. But anyway, she was in that class. I feel like everyone was annoyed by her, including the teacher. And one time I said, oh, my God. <laughs> you know, like, that's a phrase that a lot of people say. And she was like, please don't say God in front of me. And I was like, what? <laughs> um and she was like, I really value his name. And I was like, what the fuck? I couldn't believe what I had heard. Because how many people on this earth have said that phrase? in dif- You know, and not mm-hmm. just in the English language, like in different languages, you know? I was just like, the fucking audacity this bitch thinks she has. Like, I, I was blown away. I think she was just annoyed by our whole class because she was mm-hmm. not, like, I think she knew she shouldn't have been there. <laughs> one day I guess I just like snapped her and she just so I said, just triggered a memory about that fundamental school I went to like that I said for like one year and then it shut down our class got in trouble because people kept saying mm-hmm. oh my god mm-hmm. so the pastor of the the pastor of the school came to our class and was really? like 
that's calling God's name in vain. That's a sin that you shouldn't do that. And you shouldn't even say, oh my gosh, because it's so close to it. And there was like a kid in our class named Josh. And he was, you're calling God's name every time you say that. So can you imagine if, let's use Josh as an example. And he was like, if you say, oh my Josh. And then every time Josh was like, yes. Like like to make it sound like we were calling him to like show us that it wasn't right to like confuse God Mm -hmm. or whatever by calling his name every time. So, and they're like, gosh, is mm-hmm. also too close. Oh my like, God. just don't take the Lord's name in vain. I mean, if you want to, you can try to say, what? oh, my word or oh, my goodness. But you cannot say, oh, my God or oh, my gosh. And I was just sitting there like, what is happening? <laughs> I, I literally, I think that's what she said to me. She was like, don't use that name in vain. And I was like, are you seriously going to say this? shit to me in the public school setting when you don't have any idea like what my religious (laughs) beliefs are and you're gonna push your religious beliefs upon me you stupid bitch like what yeah that's a little that's crazy Uh, to me that's crazy trying to control what somebody else when it's not even like is a bit too much for me it's not Um, like you're saying like i hate god or whatever yeah i'm not yeah we're not trying to i'm not even trying to disrespect Mm -hmm anything or anyone I wasn't doing that at all but you know I me being the nice person that I am (laughs) I was just like oh okay sorry but I don't I think I continued to say it I didn't care I mean I apologize for offending her but I was like yeah I I think (laughs) I've been saying this the whole year and now you're gonna tell me that I don't really know the lines were very blurred at that school of who was like in charge of what (laughs) because everyone it was so small and like it was I don't even know how they were that organized it was insane Mm -hmm. Um, yeah I mean there's so much more I could say about all the religious schools I went to just like the way the routines mm -hmm. were with like prayer and stuff like that but it's not actually that interesting so there's not much more to say there (laughs) What? <laughs> Thank you guys for listening this week. Uh, please check us out on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts every Wednesday at 9 a.m. And we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye.